Okay, next up we have, well, I have either the delight or displeasure of introducing myself to talk to you about badging made simple. Uh, we in the LAMP Consortium have been finding that badging is gaining a lot of traction, and so I thought it would be helpful to talk to you about how badges work and how we in the LAMP Consortium are using them, um, because I thought that might be good for as a, as a lightning talk. So I want to start by showing you an image. Um, you've probably seen these before. These are merit badges on a scout uniform. So what do we know from looking at this image? Well, we know that this scout has earned a lot of badges. That's right. Um, we can tell from the image on the badges what they might be about. For example, we see one that might be about fire safety, maybe canoeing, maybe astronomy. Um, we, we might make a guess. And if we were to go to the Boy Scout uh, website, we would be able to get a, a real detailed list of the criteria that the Scout had to go through to earn each one of these badges. So that's an important point. There's an organization that stands behind the badge, that's the Boy Scouts. There are criteria for earning the badge, um, and we can see that this particular Scout has earned a lot of them, and so we're impressed by that. Now there's a downside to these kind of badges too, and that is they're physical. If the Scout loses the badge, he's lost it. Um, it's, it's gone. Um, so we need to think about something that's a little more, shall we say, electronic. And I want to do that by just giving you a demonstration. I have here a tin that a friend of mine gave me. It had a chocolate chip cookie in it. So I'm calling this my I Love Cookies badge. But the cool thing is that I can actually open this badge up and inside are criteria and, and metadata. So it's called the I Love Cookies badge. You can see who issued it. Here's the criteria that I had to meet to earn the badge. Um, I also see that... Oh, it was issued to me on a particular date. All this is metadata that's kept inside this badge. I'm going to put them all back inside here. And, and that is the way that a, um, an electronic badge works, is you can think of it as the badge has all this criteria inside it, this metadata inside it. So a badge is self-contained. It contains artwork. The artwork's important because it basically tells you what the badge is about. Um, it's issued by a particular badge issuer. The achievement criteria are, are well documented. Uh, then it's issued to a particular recipient on a particular date. That's all included in the badge. But because it's electronic, unlike my cookie tin here, um, it can be affixed to social media profiles or in an email signature or placed on a website. Anywhere that you could put a file, it can be there. Two key things. One is the badge is actually owned by the badge recipient. It's not owned by the issuer anymore. Once it's issued, it's owned by the badge recipient, and the badge recipient can take it wherever they want. But behind that badge, number two, stands the badge issuer who says, this is what criteria had to be met for, in, for this person to earn this particular badge. So those two things are important about a badge. Let me just give you some other examples. Um, here's a LinkedIn profile, and a per this person has earned a lot of badges. Um, some of them from Microsoft, some from CompTIA, and so forth. Um, and you can see that uh, you know there's there's a lot of badges here. And, and if we could click on each one of these badges and see who issued it, w under what conditions it was issued, and so forth. This is an impressive profile. Um, here's another example. This person has attached a badge to their email signature. So when they compose an email, there it is. And that that link, that badge is clickable as well. Uh, so you can see what's what's behind that badge, what it took to earn the badge, and so forth. Um, and here are some just some other examples. Uh, badges can be issued for all kinds of things, from simple attendance to something, to um, the upper right-hand corner, a certified residential building inspector. I suspect it took quite a bit to earn that badge. Um, so badges can be issued for all kinds of things, from small things to large things. The key things is they're issued by an organization that stands behind them and says this is what it took to earn this particular badge. So I want to talk to you about the open source badging or the open badges standard. It is a worldwide standard uh, format for digital badges, and it's maintained by IMS Global, which is the same organization that uh, we all know well because it they maintain the LTI standard, the course cartridge standard, and, and so forth. Um, it's a it's a free and open standard recognized throughout the world, um, and you can find out more at openbadges.org. But that's what we in the LAMP Consortium have adopted as our standard, is this Open Badges standard. So let me talk to you a little bit about how the Open Badges standard works. There are three layers. There's actually more than this. It's more complicated, but this is sort of badging made simple. Three layers, the issuer, the badge class, and the badge assertion. The issuer is basically the organization that, has, that issues badges, and they're the ones that control the criteria for issuing badges. So your institution could very well be an issuer. Um, you are the ones, as the issuer, who control what badges are issued and to whom, and you're the ones who stand behind each badge that's issued. 
Then there's a thing called a badge class. So this is basically the, the badges that you that you issue. It has the name of the badge, the criteria, that's the important thing. Um, the artwork is actually affixed there at the badge class level. And if there is expiration information, then that's attached here as well. This badge is good for one year, for example. Um, then we get down to the actual badge assertion, and that's where it links a badge class to an individual. It says this badge was issued to this person on such and such a date, and if it expires, it explains that too. So those are the three layers of the open badge standard, uh, which are, are important to know. So in the LAMP consortium, how do you get started? Well, one of the things that we have decided is that we think badging is so important that you don't have to be a member of the LAMP consortium to, to issue badges uh, through us. I'm going to be real blunt and say the cost is $200 per year for uh, up to 50 badge recipients. Now, a badge recipient means an individual person. So you could, end of, you could issue one person 20 different badges, and that would still count as just one person. So it's the number of badge recipients, not the number of badges that you issue. Um, if you are interested in, in doing this through us, it's you know basically it's four bucks a, uh, per person. Uh, let us know at info at lampschools.org, and we'd be glad to talk to you about that. If you want to get started, begin working on your badge classes. What are you going to issue badges for? And then start developing those criteria for the badge classes. That's where the real hard work uh, is, frankly. You, you also need to work on the artwork um, because it turns out that, that a, a good-looking artwork badge is important. And if you have resources on campus, that's great. Uh, use those. If you don't, we can put you in touch with uh, good resources for that sort of thing. But you can get started with badging. Um, our, our members um, actually get, this is, a, this is what we call the LAMP dashboard, and it's uh, available through the web. Uh, all of our members have this, and if you were using badging through us, you'd have access to this too. But um, you can see that I have four badge classes over on the left-hand side. I've highlighted the Sakai Grading Competency Badge. Um, so that's the badge class there in the center of the screen. The criteria actually on a website, you can see where the criteria are. And on the right-hand panel, you can see that I've actually issued this badge to two different people. Um, and, and so, you know, there, there's the whole thing right there on one page, and, and basically you can manage it uh, right there. I don't have enough time in this lightning talk to talk about other things I'd like to talk about. Uh, badge pathways are ways to link badges together in a sequence. Um, you can even pull in badges from other places. For example, if you wanted to have uh, Microsoft Excel uh, certification that was a prerequisite to some other badge that you were offering, you can do that. You can actually mix and, and match uh, badging from other sources. It's, it's really quite impressive. And I'd also love to talk about the interface to Sakai, uh, both what you can do and, and what I wish you could do, you know, the future. Lighting talks aren't enough time for all that, but I'm, hopefully I've whetted your appetite. And I think I'll end with uh, just sort of... A, maybe a little bit of a controversial topic and say that I, I've been thinking about the difference between diplomas that are issued by an institution and badges that are issued by any inst uh, uh, organization that issues badges. Um, there are differences between the two, even though there are some sort of similarities. So if you'd like to talk about that, that'd be great. Um, we can talk about anything you want, but I'll stop and ask what kinds of questions there are. And I don't have a lot of time left, but um, I would be happy to take any questions in the last minute that we have. And we're trying to get Janice set up, I see. We're having some trouble with that. Martin, what's a good way for people to just start? Like, I mean, is it good to do like an explore, you know, a huge uh, exploration of how to put the you know whole bunch of things together, or is it maybe just better to start with maybe trying to issue a badge for to students or to faculty? What's a good pilot idea to try and get their feet wet? Because it seems like this is becoming more and more available and implementable. Um, and so, where's a good place to start? Well, I, I'm I tend to be the kind of person that says start small. Um, you know, you don't you don't have to start with a, a massive program. But like I said in one of the earlier slides, um, the idea of um, I, I would say getting your criteria, you know, what does a person have to do to earn this badge? And also the artwork. The artwork seems to be a stumper for people sometimes. Um, they, they have to think about that. So anyway, um, and yes, Sean, badge pathways are part of the spec for, for us. Um, that we, it's, badge pathways are sort of beyond the open badges spec, um, but what we ended up doing is what we got. So, um, all right, I, I'm out of time.